Aliens. Konami's video game output has certainly dwindled over the years, but let me take you back to the year 1990. Arcades flourished and kids were jacked up on Jolt Cola, all the sugar, and twice the caffeine. The science fiction horror Alien film series is intriguing. Every film in the series has a different feel, thanks to each of the four movies in the original series being directed by a different person. Aliens, directed by James Cameron, was released in 1986. Instead of the dread of being hunted by a single xenomorph, Ellen Ripley leads a team of marines to the surface of LV-426, where they come across a deserted colony infested with aliens. Aliens, a side-scrolling shooter released in the arcades four years after the movie. Strangely enough, it was never ported to consoles. It's a bit surprising considering the sheer amount of side-scrolling beat-em-ups that were on the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. Instead, the Konami developed and published title was loosely based on the film, and I stress, loosely. The game features two-player cooperative gameplay, with the first person controlling a blonde Ellen Ripley and the second playing as a lighter-haired Corporal Hicks. Either way, there aren't any gameplay differences between the two characters. Both are equipped with the M56 smart gun, which you may remember from the film as Vasquez's and Drake's weapon of choice. As a two-button cabinet, you'll be able to shoot standing up or in a crouched position, handy for face huggers and other creatures low to the ground. Power-ups occasionally appear, altering the appearance of the weapon to match Ripley's pulse rifle flamethrower hybrid held together by duct tape. Depending upon the power-up chosen, you can shoot flames to turn xenomorphs into smoldering pile of ashes, launch missiles, or even slice through everything in front and next to you with a three-bullet spread shot. Next, you'll make your way across the abandoned planetary station, complete with Newt skulking in the background as you kill countless xenomorphs. Before long, you are crawling through air ducts, just like in the movies, complete with the M314 motion tractor, giving off the signature beep for movement in front and behind you. Eventually, you'll escape, defend an elevator before the cables are snapped, and drop to your death, along with sewers complete with zombies, xenomorph spiders, and more all leading to the final confrontation against the Queen. With Konami taking liberties with the alien's lore, the game features many uniquely designed and colorful xenomorphs. Strangely enough, the dark and bluish drones from the movie appear pink in most of the side-scrolling sections of the game. Bluish ones do appear during the vertical scrolling sections in between stages as you traverse the facility with the M577 APC. Hell, even facehuggers are green, but with the lore thrown out the window, the colorful appearance gives the game a more kid-friendly impression, especially during a time when teenagers and younger frequented arcades. Since there are multiple toy lines geared towards kids, and I had plenty of them, thanks Kenner, it perfectly fits this time. Aliens of the Arcade Game isn't a long experience, clocking in around 20-25 minutes playing solo or cooperative with a friend. However, it is the epitome of a coin sucker. You are given quite a bit of health, but there are so many enemies on screen attacking you from both sides that it is impossible to make it through unscathed. Bosses are entirely different, as once you learn the patterns, you can get through most of them without taking a single hit. The Alien Queen, on the other hand, is a nightmare. If you could travel back in time and play the cabinet in the arcade, make sure to save a couple of dollars worth of quarters just for the Alien Queen. From start to finish, I must have used roughly $5 worth of quarters, with almost half of them used during the final encounter. Simply put, the 1990 Konami Aliens Arcade Cabinet is an enjoyable adaptation of one of James Cameron's finest films. Unfortunately, the colorful xenomorphs and crazy designs are more inspired by the comics or the toy lines than directly from the film. Nevertheless, it is a great game, and until recently, it was one of the best games in the genre. That is, if you had 20 minutes and enough quarters to make your way through to save the terraforming colony at Hadley's Hope. 